Today we're here to talk about possession of drug paraphernalia. Drug paraphernalia is essentially anything that is used to ingest, cultivate, or assist with using or manufacturing drugs. Now let me give you a real life case that happened to me when I was a young prosecutor. Not defense lawyer, prosecutor. Had a case, I was prosecuting a guy for possession of drug paraphernalia. In this case, it was plastic baggies that were used for holding marijuana. I'm up there and the judge says to me, lawyer, are you telling me that if I got a peanut butter and jelly sandwich in my back pocket and I eat the sandwich and I stuck the plastic bag back in my pocket that I'm in possession of drug paraphernalia? Well, I start to drone on, correctly by the way, that, well, it's the purpose to which the object is used. Let me give you an example, not from paraphernalia, but in many areas in the law, the use of the object determines whether it's criminal. If I have a hammer and I'm building birdhouses, it's just a hammer. But if I am the hammer slammer killer, that same hammer, it's a murder weapon. So. Anyway, I'm going on about the purpose to which it's used and it's next to marijuana and blah, 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 blah. You're probably falling asleep. I get a tug on my jacket and I look and there's a more senior prosecutor and he says, Signal! What? I'm on a roll. He says, Sit down. Shut up. I'm like, why? Why? He goes, The judge, he knows the law. He's just trying to find out if you do. Which, so I sit down and, and shut up. But you're probably wondering, wait a second, how do these head shops get away with it? I mean, they got bongs, they got rolling papers, they got, you know, water pipes and dugouts and one hitters, everything. How do they, you know, they're all over the place. How do they get away with it? Well, two words, plausible deniability. If you go into a head shop, not that I ever have, if you go into a head shop, they have signs in there that say things like, these products are only designed for use of legal substances such as tobacco. Now, let's face it, that's a wink, wink, nod, nod. We all know what they're really for, but they have to do that so that they can try to claim if they get prosecuted, oh, uh, uh, this stuff, it was just for tobacco. We, we would never uh, think that anybody would use these for, uh, mar what's that, marrow, marrow what? I've never heard of it. And, and so, most prosecutors, at least I think, generally think, I'm not gonna waste my time prosecuting a bunch of old hippies for selling you know, drug paraphernalia. It's just not worth the time and effort of the state. Now that's, that's obviously not true. Poor old Tommy Chong, he got prosecuted and spent some time in the pokey for that very crime, but uh, generally most prosecutors, at least around here, don't really get all excited about that. Now, like I said, it's not to say that people don't get prosecuted for these crimes, and if you're watching this video, you might be one of those unfortunate people who is being prosecuted for this crime. Uh, you need to know that the punishment is usually, but not always, a misdemeanor. It depends on the way the crime was committed. Punishment is surprising while usually a misdemeanor. There's different variances of it. Some of them can be as high as 20 years in prison. You need to talk to a lawyer. Of course, if you're in a legal jam for anything, it doesn't have to be marijuana or anything like that, but if you're, if you're in a legal jam and you want our help, just give us a call. We're happy to help you. Our telephone number is, is down below there somewhere, and somewhere in this video is a link to our website. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy these videos, and if you'd be kind enough to us, please like and subscribe to these videos. Thank you for watching.